Let's see. Gears of War 3. Uncharted 3. On Live Part 3. Mass Effect 3. Well, I guess that lands us right here. I feel like I've dressed like this before. Oh my god, it's a completely new outfit! Saints Row 2 was a real surprise hit with me. I was expecting another free-roaming driving game with all the inherent fun that comes with it, but it's a funny situation when the impersonator starts doing things better than the originator. These 3D driving games have been around so long that I assume everyone knows the premise. Most say it began with Grand Theft Auto 3. However, if you want to get really picky, you could trace it back to Driver. There are likely more, but I think I should get some brownie points for actually playing Driver. Publishers saw GTA's winning formula of free-roaming crime-seeking, and that's why the 6th console generation was saturated with it. Nowadays, things are different. And by that, I mean nothing has changed at all. But Saints Row 2 stood out as an angelic mixture of humor, action, and proper video game driving mechanics. So how does Saints Row the Third fare? The ungodly mixed parody intro was just unnecessary. Star Wars came out in 1977, and 2001 A Space Odyssey was released in 1968. That's plenty of time for everyone on the planet to duplicate and train any remaining humor before Saints Row was even a franchise. Did I just say something bad about Saints Row? Sorry, 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 I, I, I didn't mean to insult the best instance of driving games since... ever. The actual game intro again nails everything you want from Saints Row. Having taken over all of Stillwater, the Saints gang is now robbing banks for sport. When the bank starts fighting back, your gang knows something isn't right. And about nailing a Saints Row intro, that still includes the 50% failure rate. I'm not talking about me completing the mission, I'm talking about getting through the first mission without the game freezing. I learned with Volition, you have to take the good with the bad. After you're caught, the character customization begins. This time, I'm going to forgo all sliders to the right because the result is an Orakai orc with a fish on its face and voiced by Taz the Tasmanian Devil. <laughs> when considering an alternative, I found myself falling back in an old Storm Dame production standard, and that is, of course, the lead singer of MSI, Jimmy Urin. For this task, I recruited some help. No, no, his face is thinner. You know, Sarah and I saw them in concert earlier this year. There was no Reno date, so we drove to the San Francisco show. I've driven to the Bay before, like when I stole a computer from Destructoid. A lot of viewers seem appalled by that idea, saying that I could have bought a computer with the money spent on gas. Seriously? Look at an online map, it's one interstate. The drive is only four hours. Actually, closer to three and a half hours. Once in California, if you're not driving 70 miles an hour, you're going too slow. The heist was foiled because the Saints mess with a much larger and well-funded group, the Syndicate. They pull you onto a private jet and make you an offer that you have to refuse. Combat erupts on the plane, and when you escape, in a manner similar to Nathan Drake doing his own stunts, you land in Steelport, a new city ready to be taken over. The first task is buying a gun via a stolen car, and I immediately notice a huge difference in the control scheme. No longer the A and B buttons for accelerate and brake, now it's the triggers. Nothing really wrong with that, I guess. With the triggers taken, weapon firing has been transferred to the left button. E-brake has also been moved, now on the A button. Looks like the scheme has been modified heavily to resemble Grand Theft Auto 4. Again, I see nothing wrong with that. The button layout is fine. I just have to check one teeny, minuscule thing. You can't be serious. Good, they didn't copy the stiffness of GTA 4. I can drive like I'm in California! Don't scare me like that, Volition! Similar to its predecessor, Saints Row the Third has three gangs to battle in Steelport. This time, they're all working with one another, which is quite a departure. Break it down now. Let's look at the respect system. In Saints Row 2, respect was your... uh, mission currency. In the third, respect is your leveling status. Okay, I can jive with that. But if the minigames no longer hinge your progression, then why are they so insistent with these side missions? Well, I found out that what seemed like an overly long introduction was actually minigames being counted in your overall mission total. Which means... I'm sorry, I had to stop right here. I'm suddenly reminded why I instituted all sliders to the right. Sarah and I were aiming for Jimmy Urin, but we landed a little bit closer to... Tommy Wiseau, if that's even how you pronounce his name. Well, I don't care, because that man can't pronounce anything. He's also part of the Machinima Network, so I should probably be a little bit nicer. This one's for you, Tommy!
many games being counted in your overall mission total, which means less of the you versus gang missions. It's like they couldn't think of 45 different ways to shoot your opposition in the face missions, so they crammed in things barely related, mini games, that you probably would have done anyway for the respect points. I much prefer the complete separation of missions and dicking around. Previously, each gang had 15 full missions with different and colorful locales. Now they are presented in waves and in predominantly drab artwork. The problem here is like comparing Resident Evil 4 to Resident Evil 5. I guess what I'm saying is I want the new to be just like the old, which is a criminal statement to all the trendy gamers. In reality, if I wanted to play a game like Saints Row 2, well, you can see where this is going. I have to pull the reins here before the headlines read, Storm reverses opinion on Saints Row. Saints Row the Third rocks. It wastes no time giving you the action experience that Hollywood continually fails at. In the first round of missions, you're already driving a tank, and by the third round, you're flying a fighter plane from the future. I was afraid that front-loading might lead to a disappointing conclusion until I remembered that there is no ceiling in this franchise. Saints Row may be another kill-kill-kill driving game, but the ridiculous and over-the-top nature nullifies any sense that this is just another murder simulator. Plus, have you seen the carjacking? It reminds me of all the mothers in the 90s that called Power Rangers the devil. Obviously, they never watched an episode. I was probably starry-eyed about SR2 because I played GTA 4 before, and that set me up to like practically anything. This is the same concept discussed in the Bayonetta video. We have to come up with a name for this. How about the Heavy Rain Ginger Theory? I don't know, you got a better idea? When I say minigames, I fear the connotation is carnival games. But you'll want to play the escort missions, both the prostitute and tiger type, so you can upgrade your pistol ammunition to explosive rounds and watch the enemies ragdoll in the air. Again, for ludicrous fun, not homicide training. Other minigames are a miss. Protect your gang member with a helicopter. But the missiles don't auto-target. And there's friendly fire. And there are other helicopters firing at you. And no. Another one has you hacking a computer by racing a bike. My first thought was, oh cool, it's Tron! Second thought, holy crap, this is disorienting. The only way I was able to pass it was to hook up a keyboard in an effort to avoid overcompensating a turn. And then there were zombies. I wanted to forgive the writers because the guy who orders you to kill them is rad, but it's zombies! Not interesting, not funny, not relevant. Now, I really like the choice system in this game. It's not choose your karma or alter your timeline. Nah, just pick whatever you feel like at the time. The only decision that changes the story is the last one, and even then the game tells you to replay it and see another ending. For anyone wondering if I had another equip the detonator situation, well, yeah, we got glitches, but no showstoppers. Just fun with brag clips. Let's finish up by talking about the other modes. I avoided co-op multiplayer, despite Colts fan 360's constant insisting. Two things. One, who the hell are you? Two, leave me the hell alone! I never accepted because of a bad experience in Saints Row 2. Co-op allows you to play missions out of order. When I was playing with Sadie, she had already escaped the prison, and her next mission was to buy new clothes. I hadn't played any missions yet, so I didn't have any money, and I resorted to beating the change out of newspaper stands just to get another outfit. Horde mode. Not sure what's going on. Zombies?! I'll piss off! Okay, back to business. Saints Row the Third can't touch Saints Row 2, but it's still an industry leader in the driving genre. It's a blast to play. Plus, have you seen the carjacking? Looking at the future of crime drivers, Saints Row 4 is already under development, as I've heard from a credible source. This dude told me on Facebook. The trailer for Grand Theft Auto 5 was released not too long ago. Of course I'm gonna play it. My hatred for number 4 won't make me abandon the franchise. But I'll take it a step further. If they fix the driving, definition, the cars don't wobble when I do a three-point turn, I will do a 12-hour live marathon with it. And I'll take Skype phone calls. And I'll give away free t-shirts! Come on, Rockstar. Think of the fans.